you like modern DIYs with maybe a slight masculine edge that you can also use for Father's Day gifts, then this is the DIY video for you today. My name is Jamie. I'm the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome back to my channel. All right, everyone, and for this first project, we are going to use a package of these toy cars from Dollar Tree. I also grabbed this package of magnets that also grabbed from Dollar Tree. And then this Crafter Square tin board is also from Dollar Tree. This tape, however, is from Amazon, and it looks like a roadway or a street. That's why I loved it and thought that it would be perfect for this project. For the metal board, the first thing you're going to want to do is bring out your painter's tape and you're going to take the painter's tape and you're going to cover the edges there um, around that brown frame. Now for mine, I wanted to paint that frame brown. So this was the easiest way to do it. You can pop that tin out of there, but then you're going to have to um, kind of glue together the, you know, the um, frame again to in order to get it to hold and I just didn't want to deal with all that so taping it was just easier. I'm going to go ahead and just take my banners tape and literally just kind of go along the edges here and just make sure that all of this is completely covered. Now while I am taping this off this is a good time to remind all of you that if you're not currently subscribed to my channel please do. Liking the video also helps me out so so much and I truly truly appreciate it and um, I am so loving being able to bring you all of these great DIY projects. Now for the frame itself, I am going to paint this using my Deco Art chalk paint. This is a color called Carbon. It is a great rich black color and it's going to be perfect for this project that I'm doing right now. And um, I did end up using two coats of this paint in order to fully cover that frame, which actually was not bad. That's about what I expected to do. Sometimes these picture frames, especially if they have that plastic finish or something can be a little tough to cover. Typically I would have taken some sandpaper or something like that to this, but um, I'm actually still out of sandpaper, believe it or not. So I am just kind of improvising here and hoping for the best, but this actually did work out really, really well. So once that was dried, I then removed that painter's tape and it was time to start working on the roadway for my magnet board. Now for my roadway, I decided that I was going to hang this uh, vertically versus horizontally, or is it horizontally versus vertically? Either way, the road goes both ways. And that's the beauty of being able to do this. You're just gonna take this roadway tape and this is literally just like a regular tape. It's not quite like a duct tape. It's, it's actually a lot thinner than that but it worked out really good and it's got a great adhesive. So after I've kind of created my, we'll call it the uh, I-95 North and the I-75 South lanes here on my board, I was ready to start working on the cars themselves to make sure that we've got plenty of traffic on our magnetic board here. So for the cars, I'm just gonna take these apart now. If you are partial to Hot Wheels or Matchbox cars, by all means, go for it and use those. I just used this three pack from Dollar Tree because it was such a good value. And I have these magnets that are also from Dollar Tree and they have um, these kind of little magnets that are actually perfect for these cars. So very, very easily, I'm just going to separate the magnets and I am going to glue one of the magnets onto the bottom of each one of my cars, kind of like so. And what's really cool about these is that they stick perfectly to these Crafter Square tin boards. And as you can see, traffic is already getting busy, but we've got to add a note. We, this is a memo board. We're gonna use this for multiple things. And while we're doing that, I might as well promote that I'm gonna be in Courtney from Creative on the Cheap's upcoming mystery box challenge that is going to be coming up at the end of June. So definitely be watching out for that one. Definitely looking forward to that and very, very excited. And by the way, how cute is this? Absolutely love this project. Now, while I was in San Francisco and I went to the store called Daiso, I picked up this great tray that had this great wood grain kind of 
back to it. I thought that this tray would be a fantastic tray to create, to use in my craft room. Now, it's already black, which goes perfectly with my craft room, but I wanted to add something and some color into it. And while I was also at Daiso, I grabbed this wood, um, it's kind of like a wood wallpaper. I kind of thought it was kind of like shelf liner or something very similar. It's in Japanese, so I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I thought that this could be really, really beautiful and also would be a very nice transition against that black tray. Now, the only problem with this is that it unfortunately just did not stick. It was not, um, very adhesive-y. Um, <laughs> the glue on the back of it was just very, very light. There were English instructions on the back and it wasn't like I was supposed to add water. It's not wallpaper, it's actually peel and stick. And uh, as you can see, the creasing in it is just really, really aggressive. So when I stuck it down, at first I thought it was going to work because I brought out my roller there that is, you know, for Mod Podge and stuff and started rolling it out. And um, at first it started to stick and then it kept popping back up. So I decided to scrap this and instead go with the wood grain contact paper from Dollar Tree. And that ended up working out perfectly. I took a piece of it, rolled it out, cut it down to size, simply peeled off the backing and then stuck it down. And what's so great about this tray is that I can use it to stage items that I'm working on in my craft room like this next project using these cute little lanterns from Dollar Tree. Now, I wanted to do something that was going to be a little more masculine, something that would work really well within my craft space and within my office space. But um, these bright blue or these kind of uh, seafoam green colored uh, lanterns just weren't going to cut it. And now you can see with the tray how useful it is because I can literally pull out all of my tools, put it on my tray, and then I'm ready to get creating. And it is literally the best thing that I've ever created. So I took my lanterns and we're just going to go ahead and start separating these. We're going to move the lights out of those. And by the way, if you ever purchase any of these, uh, check the lights on them. I had one that was a dud, but luckily I had another lantern on site. So I was able to just swap out that light. And also I did find out that the reusable kind of tea lights that you can get at Dollar Tree or the, the kind of battery operated ones that you can buy in the two packs, they actually will fit inside of here as well. You just gotta force it a little bit, but they do fit. So something to think about. Go ahead and take apart the lights and also take the rings off the top of these. And we are going to get these ready because we are going to take them out and spray paint. But as you can see here on my tray, I'm putting everything that I don't need to take outside right away. That way everything has a home and I know exactly where it needs to go. Now outside, I'm taking these and I'm spray painting them black. I'm just using my flat matte black Rust-Oleum paint. I think Rust-Oleum should sponsor today's video. If anybody knows anybody from Rust-Oleum, please reach out to them. I spray painted the rings as well as the lanterns. And as you can see, these are ready to go. Now for the rope, we're going to take this Dollar Tree nautical rope because I'm going to create kind of three lanterns that are hanging from this rope. I'm going to go ahead and cut this apart. And then I'm just going to make sure that the uh, rope pieces are slightly longer than each other. So I've got three lanterns. I kind of want them to hang at three different heights, but be very, very similar. So I'm taking three pieces of rope here, just cutting them off at multiple lengths. And then we are going to start to kind of um, combine them together. Now, the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna actually work on this individually. Go ahead and add your rings right back to your lanterns. They're kind of like little keychain rings. You could certainly cover them up in a twine or something like that if you wanted to. I also think this would be really, really cute to keep them that sea foam green that you saw before, or even to paint them like white or another bright color and use this nautical rope, maybe even the white nautical rope and create something very kind of nautical. I think those starfish that you can find at Dollar Tree right now would be so cute on top of these lanterns as well to create a very nautical vibe. Now I'm just taking the end of my nautical rope and just kind of folding it over like that. I did add a little bit of hot glue and we're gonna make sure that that is kind of held together just with my fingers. 
until it starts to hold really well. And then we are going to go ahead and take some hot glue, kind of cram it in there and squeeze it in there and hold it together again, just making sure that nothing falls apart. And then we are going to take our twine and we are going to start wrapping this area because that hot glue is going to hold it to some degree, but we want the twine to help hold it together. But then also that twine is going to be used because it is going to add a nice kind of decorative element to our ropes. So we're going to do that with all three of our ropes. That way you've got this kind of very similar hanging hardware, if you will. And then once everything is done, you are going to take your three pieces of rope and you're going to bring them together at the other end. And you're gonna bring them together, you're gonna to fold it over and you're going to make a bundle very similar to what you did before with your three ropes at the top. That way you have something to hang this with. And when you're all done, just add your lights back in and you've got the cutest light. I love the way this looks, especially with that black and white photo that's in my office. I'm super, super happy with this. Think that this is a really nice added touch and I could see this working with a lot of different decor styles. And for my last DIY, we're going to take this kind of uh, freestanding memo board that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I had these airplanes from a previous stash. I believe I got them on Amazon and they came in like a pack of eight or ten. Then I have this vintage scrapbook map paper. This piece happens to be just a piece that was loose. But as you can see, there's a lot of different color options and a lot of different choices. So the first thing I'm going to do is take those uh, kind of clothespins off of this. And all I'm going to do is just kind of snip that directly down where that twine is connected to the board there and we're going to save those clothespins and we're going to save that piece of twine because we are going to use that later on in the project now for the edges of the board i am going to paint these black i'm using this carbon that is a color by deco art i actually love this color this is my new favorite color it's just got such a dark depth kind of I just love the way this looks. And um, I like it actually, I think, better coverage-wise than some of the Waverly products that I've used. Now I'm using my Elmer's Purple Spray Glue here, and I'm just going to give the top of this a generous coating. And then I added this piece of my vintage map scrapbook paper. Go figure, I went with the blue. And uh, I'm gonna use my Mod Podge roller to just go ahead and smooth this out. Now the top of that memo board does have like a glittery kind of raised surface, but I didn't let that bother me for this particular project because I kind of liked the way that uh, that kind of texture really built in. Now, I'm just going to take some of my chalk paint here and I'm just going to kind of touch up the edges there and then I'm going to add some aging onto the map itself. And then when it's done, you've got something that's going to kind of look like this and you can see the crinkling and everything and the texture that I'm starting to that I was talking about earlier. It's starting to show through as everything is drying and I'm really loving it. Now for those clothespins, I'm going to take those airplanes that we had and I am going to glue those airplanes on top of the clothespins because those airplanes are going to become airplane clothespins. And we're gonna need those for our memo board because this is the perfect size for a desk. I actually have this and I have the car on my desk right now and I love it because I can leave myself notes and memos and it's just kind of whimsy and fun. You're gonna take your airplanes and just glue them directly down using hot glue. You could also use super glue. Now, if you don't have any airplanes like this, I would highly recommend that you go to Dollar Tree, look in the toy department, or even in the section where the party supplies are. Sometimes you can find some toy airplanes or toy cars. You could use animals, you could use flowers, you could use really anything you wanted to kind of recreate your own kind of personalized memo board. And again, I love the way that this turned out. I think that this is super, super whimsy. And as you can see, it is the perfect addition to my tabletop here. It's a great way to just hold some fun notes and some fun memos. And I love how whimsical this is. All right, you guys, let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. I think the magnet board with the 
Hot Wheels cars or the, you know, faux Hot Wheels cars are definitely my absolute favorite. It brings back a lot of fun childhood memories and I actually have it hanging here in my craft room space right now. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you are a long-term subscriber of mine, I call you guys my OGs. That just means you're a part of the original gang. So thank you so much for being here. And of course, if you're brand new to the channel, hopefully you liked this video enough that you will become a subscriber and you will like and subscribe and notify and all those other things that you do here on YouTube so I can let you know or so YouTube can let you know when I post a new video. All right, guys, take care and I will chat with you later. Bye-bye.